Today, in our responsive portfolio landing page website, we will work on progress bar both circular and linear, representing our skills in the skills section along with some animation. As you can see, both progress bars display progress percentage with animation. Whenever I refresh the page but only linear progress bar display this animation every time I scroll back to it. Circular one only show off its animation once after refresh. I know you all have been there where if code finally works. You don't want to mess with it for the sake of more animation. But maybe some time later I will make this circular progress bar animation scroll based. Looks good so far for large screen. And small screen too. Let's see the tablet screen size. I hope you guys are seeing how different the content structure looks for different screen sizes. I don't know about you guys, but I just love this box shadow used here. It's not too dark nor too light making it look professional. I should probably change the position of the cute square shape at the back of our content that is to down below. All in all everything looks great, let's hunt down our channel intro. Let's see our files and open up our browser inside VS Code. Well how sexy our past work on this portfolio look like. Go watch other videos in this playlist as well. Trust me you won't regret anything, hopefully. Now that this is set let's write our HTML for both linear and circular progress bars in this skill section. Let's create this skill section in HTML. While this AI dude Joey blabbers. Let's get this title and cute squares from the previous section. This skill container will be containing both linear and circular progress bars. So I have added row class to create responsiveness to it. Let's work on our linear progress bar where we tell the employers how much we think we are good at technical skills. Some say it's not good to add in the portfolio, and some say it's important. So add it on your own risk. If you get bored watching this video, please subscribe. Because every subscriber makes my mom happy. And if my subscribers reach 100, that is the best gift I can give my mom right now. Make sure your data progress attribute value is same as span value and exactly what you consider your skill percentage is. By the way, I have added six technical skills, so copy-paste five times this subtitle and progress classes. This part of portfolio makes me realize how much progress I have made now after all these years. I would change my percentage to be better than this. No, I am not showing off at all. Just a teeny tiny bit. But then again, if I didn't make any progress in years, that will be embarrassing. Please write something better than these skills. They all look quite similar, but maybe that's just me. Oops! Here comes the professional skills, or in other words, your capabilities of dealing with any scenario in a professional manner. This part of the code I remember annoyed me so much because I had a hard time dealing with SVG back then. As usual, we are gonna row the whole wrapper. I don't know why, but I feel like I am obsessed with this row class. Here in Data Circular Progress, make sure to write the percentage you think suits your skills. Make sure to have the same width and height for all SVGs. This R refers to a radius of 65 units and its center position at coordinates 80, 100. The class track means it's the background track of the progress bar. This circle represents the progress bar itself, which will be visually filled according to the percentage specified in the data attribute. This is where we will have our percentage and skill name written inside the circle. Copy-paste this three more times. Add some professional skills you have. And while you guys are doing it, 
I think I am bored. So tell me, do you even like this AI dude's voice? Do tell anything about this video in the comments. Actually don't. I feel happy and dreadful at the same time thinking about having comments. My shy self can't handle it. But then again, how else would I face my social fear? Let's make sure we have everything we need in HTML. Everything looks perfect for HTML. Let's see how it looks on big screen first. Oh, we forgot to get the cute square a bit above its current position. Which square is it again? After 84 years, we finally clicked on the square. Hum, 43 looks better. It's still gross, let's go CSS. All right, let's make it as pretty as Met Gala celebs. But then again, Met Gala celebs make me laugh at their get up. No offense. Let's start with the skill container, and since it has row class, we just need to add the gap. So we have different content structure for different screen sizes. So for now, our width is 100%. This is our technical skills name, so we want it to be on left. This is the progress background that will be filled. According to the percentage, we have given to the data progress attribute in progress bar class. So how is your life progressing so far? Actually, don't tell me. Just know it will all be better eventually. Every bad thing happens after the good and every good thing happens after bad. Why am I even talking so serious? With the 0% in progress bar, but don't worry it will be alright once we take care of JavaScript. We will make its width fill according to the data progress attribute. I have seen many stuff on the internet that looks cool. Way cooler than mine obviously, but few of them just don't feel professional or practical. I try to only show content that is professional and practical, not something that looks cool and flashy, but lacks practicality, efficiency, and usability. I am not that perfect, but I try and I hope people learn something from my mistakes the same way I am learning. Anyways, we are now dealing with circular progress bar, or in other words, professional skills. Let's hope that is enough gap. This circle contains everything you saw inside the circle like progress of your skill, as well as skill name and percentage. We will be keeping the percentage inside the circle and skill name below the circle. Border radius 50% to make it a circle obviously. If you are wondering what this box shadow value looks like, it looks like this. This circle inner just includes skill name and percentage, and it has my favorite row class attached to it. I don't know why, but it looks like an eyeball right now, and eyes are scary. Anyways, please go and watch my other videos in this playlist, and check out my fun 3D flip card video. Oh, this circle looks good now, so no more scary eyes. Now we make a circle inside the circle to display our percentage. And to make this circle look pretty while making sure our colors in this entire website is on theme. By the way, the inherit value for a property means that it will inherit the computed value of that property from its parent element.
Wow, it looks as pretty as me. And now you guys must be wondering how ugly I am. Here we go with SVGs. This fill is an SVG property that specifies that the circle should have no fill color, making it transparent. Stroke property in CSS specifies the color of the outline of a shape or text. Stroke width sets the width of the circle. The stroke line cap defines the shape of the ends of lines or paths in SVG. Stroke dash array sets the pattern of dashes and gaps, while stroke dash offset determines the initial offset of the dash pattern along the path. I guess that's all for CSS before we move on to media queries, but first let's make sure we are done. Fun fact media queries are very short today. Well, media queries today are just going to tell the technical and professional classes to not have full 100% width, but only 45% on the large screen size or laptop size 1020 for pixels onwards. Now let's test if the layout is breaking to look bad or not. Is it just me or I feel like the circles have a little bit more space than necessary between them? We are using max width to restrict it from taking over entire screen at any point, which will lead to them having less space in between. See why I love to have this browser by my VS Code. It provides me different responsive options. Let's add some animation with JavaScript. So let's start JavaScript with our linear progress bar for technical skills. Since we are supposed to show and hide filled colors in the linear progress bar according to the progress percentage. Show progress function sets the width of each progress bar according to its data progress attribute and makes them visible by setting opacity to 1. The dataset property provides read and write access to custom data attributes on elements, in this case data progress. Here you may think it's commas, but actually it's backticks. Hide progress function hides the progress bars by setting their opacity to zero and width to zero. As we know we want our linear progress bar to be filled when scroll to it to create animation. This event listener triggers when the user scrolls. It calculates the position of the skills section relative to the viewport. If the skills section is at least halfway visible in the viewport, it calls show progress function to display the progress bars. Otherwise, it calls hide progress function to hide them. What now? Why is it not working? Why is JavaScript always annoying me with something? We want the bar to be filled with given progress bar percentage. It looks so good to be working I want to keep scrolling to it. Now it is turned for circular progress bar for professional skills in skill section. This section handles circular progress bars. It triggers when the user scrolls and checks if the circular progress bars are within 600 pixels of the viewport. If so, it calculates the circumference of each circle and sets its stroke dash array and offset to visualize the progress. But it only triggers once because the ball ensures that the circular progress bar logic triggers only once by preventing reinitialization after the initial trigger. By the way, after seeing both kind of progress bars, what do you think looks best, especially for portfolios? In SVG scalable vector graphics, many properties are represented as objects with multiple values. The Sevel is a property used to access the base value of certain SVG properties, such as a radius in the case of circles or other shapes. It's fun, isn't it? How we can manipulate CSS property values in JavaScript. For some reason, it's one of the reasons I love JavaScript, but then again, I make such stupid mistakes in code out of hurry that makes me hate it. Love-hate relationship, I guess. 
reminds me I once used JavaScript to write to Python values in HTML web page, where Python was taking said values from Arduino C++, which was real-time circuit values. For a person with no idea how to deal with Arduino and circuits, I guess I did good, but then again, there might have been a better way, but I was too new to coding to know that. Now what? Apparently, we don't know the spelling of stroke. See how JavaScript annoys me. Always some spelling mistake. This looks sexy as hell. Wanna keep refreshing it? Here comes the outcome of our hard work without speeding up the video. Looks good, right? I love to keep refreshing the page just to see the bars fill up. But now we gotta see it on different screen sizes to see how cute it looks. By the way, in the next video, we will deal with portfolio section and its image gallery. I assure you, it will be a pain in the something of a video to make. I have some slow internet issues, unfortunately. Whenever I refresh to show you guys how cool circular progress animation looks, my screen is either to down or too up to see the most circles. I might be new to YouTube video editing, but I will figure something out to display stuff properly, so don't worry. How can we forget showing off our cute squares? How about I refresh the video one last time and move to skills section using navigation bar? That should display the skills section better. English is not my language, so I don't even know if you understand my dilemma or not. Let's see it one last time. Well, at least you saw two circles showing complete animation. If you dealt with my dead humor for 17 minutes straight, then 